Welcome back friends, it's Anders. Today we are making the Flying Dutchman. This is a drink I've been making for years and for years I thought this was a classic cocktail. It's not a classic cocktail, turns out, but we're making it anyway. And the reason why we're making it is because I think it is a wonderful introduction to a spirit called Geneva. If you're not familiar with Geneva, then this is your episode. I should also point out that this episode is sponsored by the World of Geneva. I know, it sounds epic, and it is. So we are gonna touch on what Geneva is, we are gonna make this fine, fine cocktail, have some sips and some fun. So I know a lot of you say don't mix with Geneva. I've actually received this in comments before. I think that there are just some people that are adamant that you should just have it neat. But if you tell me to not mix with a spirit, I'm probably gonna do it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make the Flying Dutchman. To the bar. All right, first we are gonna talk about the cocktail, the Flying Dutchman, named after the legendary ghost ship that's doomed to sail the seas for eternity, and the same ship that made its way into popular culture, such as the Pirates of the Caribbean that movie, that series of movies, highly topical, and SpongeBob SquarePants, less so topical. It's a great name for a drink. There has to be a Flying Dutchman, and it makes sense that it would be Geneva-based, which is a Dutch spirit. Now, I always thought that this cocktail was a classic cocktail. It turns out it's not. It was created in San Francisco by a gentleman named Brian McGregor, who was a bartender in San Francisco and came up with this great drink in, I'm not sure what year, but not that long ago. I got this information from liquor.com. I didn't know that before I read this. That's the history. So this drink is great because it falls between a whiskey cocktail and a gin cocktail, and it serves as the missing link between the two. And that's what Geneva can be. Geneva! I can't show any bias to any Geneva because this is sponsored by the world of Geneva. So I put these in unmarked bottles. This is not moonshine. I also uh, would not recommend doing this if you work behind a professional bar. You could get in big trouble because that is illegal. I'm gonna talk about two different styles. As you can see, they look different because they are different. Before I break this down, let's talk about what Geneva is. Now, a lot of people say Geneva is the precursor to gin, and that's true. It is much older. It's 500 years old they've been making this stuff. It's like gin in that it is made with juniper berries and botanicals, but it's also kind of like whiskey because it is made with a malted spirit derived from wheat, rye, barley, corn, whiskey stuff. So now there are two styles. We have the old style, also called Ode, and we have the young style, which would be Jung. The old style is gonna have more of that malt characteristic, because there's more malt spirit in it, and the young is gonna be more of the fresh botanical, similar to gin. It has less malt spirit in it. So if you are a big gin drinker, curious about Geneva, look for a younger style. If you are a whiskey drinker, curious about Geneva, check out an older style. Oh, where is it from? Good, where is it from? From the Netherlands, Holland. But it's also made in Belgium and parts of France and parts of Germany. It can be barrel aged, it cannot be barrel aged. So this is why there are a number of different expressions of Geneva. Now, I picked two that I like very much. I can't show you which ones, right? But I can tell you that some bottles are gonna say old style and some will say young style or Ode and Yonga. Um, so, but not all bottles say this. <laughs> That's okay, because as a rule, the young style cannot have any color to it. Hmm? That doesn't mean it can't be aged, but it has to be clear, like this. So if you see a clear bottle, wait, no, hold on, that's not true. Because if you see a clear bottle of Geneva, it will either be young or old style, so that doesn't help you. But if you see a darker Geneva that's this color, that means it's an old style. Look for a bottle that says Geneva on it and give it a try. It's gonna be great. All of them. Now oh, the ingredients. So I'm gonna be making two cocktails. I'm gonna be making an older one and a younger one. You're gonna need your choice of Geneva, yellow chartreuse, Benedictine, and lemon juice. 
freshly squeezed. I'm making the same cocktail twice with the two different styles of Geneva. So this is one of them, and this is one of them. And I'm gonna drink them, and I'm gonna see, can I tell the difference? So let's build. It's time to work. Get your glassware chilling. I'm gonna serve this up in a coop. Two coops. These builds are exactly the same, so I'm gonna be doing these simultaneously. One and a half ounces of Geneva, half an ounce of yellow chartreuse. The ratios that I'm using are slightly different than the original that Brian McGregor came up with. He did a little heavier hand of the other ingredients, but I want to bring up that Geneva. Personal preference, half ounce of Benedictine and half ounce of fresh lemon juice. Now we can add ice and shake. The usual 15 seconds or so. Ooh, if you could only see what I see. Get your glassware and double strain right into the cocktail glass. Lemon zest right on top. And I'm actually going to put it on the drink because the Flying Dutchman needs a sail to sail the seas forevermore. That's my usual garnish. <sighs> the Flying Dutchman times two. Cheers. Oz, would you care to join me? <laughs> sure. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Good. Ooh, this is good. Let's switch. Actually, very different. Yeah. Still very good. Uh huh. A lot more malt in the old style. It's earthier, kind of richer. The younger style, I think, is more aromatic, more like gin. You get the botanicals. It's brighter. I actually have a preference between the two in styles. Mm. I I think I like the the old style. I like the malt in there. I can't say which one I like better because now I have a bias because I've heard Anders' opinion. Coincidentally, I've been called for a jury selection. Oh yeah. Which has a lot to do with bias. I know because I've served on a jury before. I don't know why I keep getting selected. It's gonna be a case where I'm on trial for pouring booze into unmarked bottles. Because <laughs> that's illegal. <laughs> Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. Thank you to the world of Geneva for sponsoring today's video. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Support Geneva. Support Geneva. Support Explore Geneva. the world. Now is the time you decide what video you watch next. Ah. I would recommend checking out our most recent video, that one, which is really good. Uh, also, or the or, garnish video. Oh, or, the garnish video. Uh huh. We'll yeah, that's that a good right one too. Here. Garnish video. Have you ever had Geneva? Do you know what it is? Do you like it? How do you pronounce it?